Thank you, Trevor. And for what you're doing in our neighbor, it's quite, quite often we forget that we're a region, aren't mm -hmm. we? And that what happens to one part of the, the region is going to have an, ha does have an impact to another part of the region. But do you, do you regret going home? No, not at all, uh, uh, Alec. Absolutely not. It's, um, so it's tough, Alec. Um, let me give you a, a, a picture of um, what a lot of people have to deal with. Uh, you get up in the morning, there's no electricity. The majority of uh, Zimbabweans, uh, perhaps even the richest, don't have water, running water in their homes. Uh, they buy water. Water gets delivered to their homes. So water is not there. Uh, electricity is a problem. You get out of your, your gate to drive. We've got the worst potholes. <laughs> I was saying to my wife when we when we when we're driving, uh, my wife we were discussing and saying, you know, Alex sent an email saying that portals. Seriously, <laughs> are these portals? We have real portals. Um, so if if you want to see proper portals, come come to Zimbabwe. So life is life is a is a pain. Um, you the things that you take for granted um, in societies that work are a mission. To, 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 to get to happen in Zimbabwe. You know, we have a saying that it's as if ZANU PF, every time we go to bed, they gather together to say, How do we fix Zimbabweans tomorrow? Um, how do we mess that up their lives? It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a struggle. But would I be anywhere else in the world? Absolutely not. I, I think the thing for us and for me is having been here, Alec, for 18 years, I mean, I, I had a good life here um, for 18 years. But watching my country go down the way it's been and not doing anything, um, I have held the unction, the burning desire to be in there and do something um, that will change things. And um, accepting the appointment by President Nangago to serve in the PAC was for me saying, if I say no and I stay on the sidelines and I just criticize, so what is it that I want to, to, to happen at the end of the day? So I accepted. But now I have a clear conscience. I accepted, I served, I saw just how impossible it is that uh, politicians have their minds made up. It's not about the people, it's about them. It's about their interests and, and it's about their narrow interests. And if you think you can get in there and change, then dream on. What about going into politics yourself? I've tried it, Alec, and uh, I think the truth is uh, my wife, um, uh, it's interesting that there are themes that uh, run across, you know, from uh, going to the North Pole, <clears throat> the, first, the first talk on um, uh, when, we, when we came in. You know, my wife said, try it and see what happens. So I did try um, to support, first of all, our first Minister of Finance, Simba Makoni, and then... Um, um, Kosana Moyo, who was our Minister of Industry and, and, and Commerce, because I thought that, and I still believe, that ZANU-PF does not have what it takes to get Zimbabwe where we want to go. Uh, the opposition, sadly, is a, it's, it's, it's a mirror image of ZANU-PF. They are smaller, but basically what they want to do is to get in and do what uh, ZANU-PF uh, is doing. They will say, oh, no, we're not violent and so forth, but I see nothing. In, 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 um, ZANU P in MDC, rather, that would say to me, let me throw my all in there. So I tried, but there's a fascinating thing. Um, uh, Helen is, is gone. Th there's this fascinating thing about the DNA of people that get into politics, <laughs> uh, which I just found so disagreeable, uh, where you say to yourself, we are in this thing to see if we can uh, turn things around, but if I know, actually, we are in this thing to see if we can, you know, have a cut, have a share. It's uh, create an opportunity for our time. It's our time to eat, and we are seeing that as far as Mnangagwa is concerned. We thought Mnangagwa was concerned about the 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 lot of Zimbabweans, when in actual fact, he and his people around him and his tribe, the Karanga, uh, who have been. Uh, not happy that the Zuzuri have been ruling for a long time. It's now their time tend to eat, and that's what it's all about. And for me, Alec, uh, and we see this happening in, 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 in South Africa and all over the region, for me, that will not deliver the new Zimbabwe that we want. 
we need a new politics. We need a politics that is driven by values, by principles. We need a, a new politics that is driven by constitutionalism, that is driven by rule of law, that is driven by the love of humanity and what is best among us, that is driven by the love of uh, the orphans, the widows, uh, the poor amongst us. What's the best thing to do in a country to ensure that those people are taken good care of? You run the country well, you run the businesses well, you earn taxes from, uh, from, from business, you allow business to do what business is supposed to how, do. How did H.H. Chalema change things in Zambia? Because I'm sure if you go back a few years, you would have said, well, Zambia, same situation that Zimbabwe is in now. And, and if you can apply those lessons, or is it possible to apply those lessons to Zimbabwe? It is possible, and I think the underlying um, thing there is patience. HH has been very patient, point number one. But point number two, look at the man. Um, he's a chartered accountant. He's got a track record. He has run something. He has run a successful business. Uh, how can you get somebody who's never run a tax shop to run a country, for goodness sake? Okay? It's not possible. I mean, we underrate the importance of experience, the importance of exposure, the importance of the right values in the person who says they want to raise their hand to lead. So HH, I think his person, what he has done in the past, has infused in him the experience and the worldview that will help him uh, get on. But look at the people that HH is, at, is, a, is appointing. He's appointing professional people, Zambians who are professional, who've, who've done things, who've got a track record. My sense is that he will get it right. My sense is that uh, uh, if, if the forces of evil <laughs> don't come in and push him right, Zambia could be a place to, 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 to look forward to. Now, I know a lot of people in this audience are, are thinking, oh, bugger, a lot of what you've spoken about is what has been repeated here in South Africa. The, the uh, ramaphoria, and I don't know what you called it in Zim, ngagwaphoria, <laughs> it caught us all up. I remember seeing him at the, at the uh, World Economic Forum at that, when he'd just been appointed, and there were lines of people, big businesses all over the world, wanting to meet this new, this new CEO of Zimbabwe Incorporated. We're open for business as per what Ramaphosa said here. Ramaphoria seems to have died down, not as badly mm -hmm. as what happened to the North. But what is it, what are the, 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 the steps that could be taken in a South Africa to ensure that what has happened in Zim is not repeated here? Mm. You know, you remind me, I, I got into big trouble in 2002 when I, uh, when we first came into this country, 2002. I, I, I said to South Africans, be careful, I can see the zonification of the ANC. And I got into big trouble. Uh, driving to my office, uh, there were headlines, uh, to the Maryland Garden, there were headlines that say, Trevor in hot soup. And the ANC was very angry with me. Um, and I've been saying, Alec, that Zimbabwe becoming what it has become does not happen overnight. It's a process. Um, and this has been happening in South, in South Africa. The undermining of institutions, the elevation of people that should not be in certain position. Cadre deployment means that you're not getting the best people to run, uh, to run the country. The, I'm one of those people that got excited about Cyril Ramaphosa, but I think a generous part of me says Cyril is being patient in managing the ANC, because if he rocks the boat, um, maybe these people might jettison him out, they might recall him. Maybe that's a generous part of me. The other part of me says he's lost time in terms of stamping his authority on the ANC, and l let what happens, happens. My sense is that there's too much uh, desire on his part for consensus to get everybody on board there's lack of decisiveness on his part. He's a good man. He means well. He's, he's done good stuff. But, I th you know, the disappointment is he does not make decisions. He does not act. He's not decisive. And those around him have noticed that. 
but sadly, as that is happening, South Africa is going down the drain. Um, I, I am worried about where South Africa is right now. I am worried about the things that South Africans think are important uh, and the focus on things that we have done that have not worked. Um, forced taking of farms <laughs> from white people is a no, no, it doesn't work. It's very damaging. Should farms, should uh, there be land reform? Absolutely. Because there can't be justification for one race uh, owning biggest chunks of land when there are people who don't have land. But let's not make the mistake of saying that every black person is a farmer and must be given land, because that's, that's not true. So the land reform is going to happen, first of all. There's got to be a market mechanisms of deciding um, with the value of the land that, is, that has been taken over. And who is it being, give, being given to? Is it being given to people that can farm or not farm? Because at the end of the day, we were called the bread basket of Southern Africa. We are no longer. But you can see the evidence. If you drive from Harare to Bulawayo, you can see some of the most productive farms that are now lying fallow because they were given to people that thought they could farm but cannot farm. So I do see things and trends that we saw happening in Zimbabwe, which South Africans should be looking at and saying, there are lessons there for us. I am concerned. When Helen outlined the political situation in South Africa, it, a lot of things seemed to make sense, well, made sense to me for the first time. But is it as simple as that? Do we have this morass of the ANC, the Zanuficated mm -hmm. ANC, uh, which doesn't really have a policy and doesn't really know where it's going, but it was a liberation movement. And then you've got a, a one side of the spectrum saying free market, open economy, open society, and the other side saying centralization, mm -hmm. uh, control, and big man of Africa kind of replication. Do you, was she being simplistic, or, or how would you interpret that? I think in broad terms, she's right. There's, there's, that, there's that tension, the, the leftists and what you'd call the liberals on the other, on the other, on the other side, people who are invested in, um, in, in taking over companies, the economy, uh, nationalizing the central bank and so forth. For what, for what reason? And people that believe that the market forces ought to take place. Where I think uh, Helen and a lot of my white compatriots get things wrong, and fatally so, is where Helen says there isn't a black vote. That's wrong. There is a black vote. Until the DA and white South Africans understand the issues that are keeping South Africans from going en masse to vote for DA, we will have South Africa, uh, we will have the fight for the soul of South Africa being the ANC and EFF, not the DA, okay? So it's fundamentally important for white South Africans to understand that there is something called the black vote. That is legitimate concerns that arise from apartheid. Take time to understand what those concerns are and embrace those concerns because they are the lived experiences of black people in this country. Until you're able to do that, sadly, EFF, with the demagogue that it has and everything else that they are talking about, has more chance of running this country than the DA. At our very first business conference, uh, our opening keynote was made by Herman Mashaba. It was ahead of the uh, local elections. Herman certainly cut uh, or, or touched a lot of uh, very sweet spots in the audience that was listening to him and made a lot of sense. What Helen has, not by saying it directly, but, but really the interpretation from the DA, which has been around for a long time, is that Herman is too close to the EFF. He wants to do deals with the EFF just to get the ANC out. If you could advise Herman, if he phoned you up, he was sitting here as a member of our, our delegates, as he was two conferences ago, and you had that discussion with him over a cup of tea, what, what would you be able to take from your experiences and understanding of Zimbabwe that could help mm. uh, to take this country in potentially a different direction if he were to, to continue to grow as he has done so quickly? Uh, the, the, I'm just amazed at how 
um, Hammond, from where he comes from, thinks he can do a deal with people in the EFF. Because th for me, his point of departure and the point of departure of the uh, EFF are radically different. Um, and th and so therefore, I don't see what accommodation could be achieved there. I do see yeah, his m if he was moderated um, and, and uh, liberal, uh, looking for a bigger space for business, him engaging with moderate people and reasonable people within the ANC to win that middle ground. There could be, there could be progress there. I am, I've been a big fan of Emin Mashawa, but not of late. Because I think, um, uh, what is it called? Action for South Africa, or, action, uh, action, action essay, essay. borders on uh, wanting to trade in to traffic in xenophobia. Um, the focus of the people that are around him in Mashaba, uh, people that think that Nigerians and Zimbabweans are responsible for the problems that South Africa is experiencing, that is wrong. That is wrong. It's xenophobic, and it's going to deliver terrible consequences for this country. For, so for, for that issue, for me, it says, if this man can make a fundamental mistake like this, why should I trust him going forward? I, I guess it almost feels like the ANC has now picked up from the popularity of Action SA and almost they've written xenophobia into law. You, you, we've got new quotas, yeah. which is unprecedented in this country. Is that also something in the same Context. It, it is, and um, sadly, Alec, um, and we don't, we're not demanding the ANC to pay back Africa for having accommodated them uh, during the liberation struggle, but we, you know, common sense um, of saying, you know, your, your, the policies that you're talking about right now, uh, let me just step back and say, you have now we, you have uh, Thabo Mbeki and other people in the ANC who spend a lot of time on the African continent. The most amazing thing is that you rarely hear, you, you, you'll hardly hear these guys talk about their experiences on the continent. It's as if they're embarrassed to be African. And that being South African makes them different, uh, different Africans of some sort. It's populist, it's not leadership. It's dangerous, it's demagoguery. Um, to, 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 to do that kind, of, that kind of stuff. This is not the ANC of Nelson Mandela. This is a different kind of ANC. And for me, in t if, I was, if I was doing an analysis, I would say this leadership does not embody the, uh, the democratic principles, the values of uh, uh, a human uh, rights-based culture, uh, uh, community of nations and, and neighborliness and that kind, of, that kind of stuff. This is a different kind of ANC. There's a lot of uh, an unnecessary uh, demagoguery. There's a lot of uh, playing to the gallery rather than providing leadership. Let me remind South Africans that at one time, Nelson Mandela stood at FNB uh, Stadium after the, the murder of uh, Chris Honey. And the people in the stadium wanted something else to be done. Nelson Mandela stood up and said, if I'm still your leader, you will not do that. People mumbled and sat down. That is leadership. Leadership is being able to take unpopular positions because you have a long-term view. Playing to the gallery is not leadership. It's what you and I can do. We can play to the gallery. We, we forget so easily, don't we? Chris Harney's murder uh, could have made the July riots last year look like a, a yeah. picnic. Yeah. And, and it was only leadership that prevented that. We're going to go to the floor now, so if you put your hands up, a, a microphone will come through, uh, will be brought to you. But Trevor, my, my, my kind of final question here is, can you give us some, some signposts to watch within South Africa that it is heading in a Zimbabwean direction? And I, I, I use this now from a comp trying to get a completely neutral observer who's saying, I have to provide for my family, for my family's wealth. I have exported capital, or I would export more capital if I see these warning signs coming through. What should we be looking out for? I think I agree with uh, Helen's um, assessment that um, watch who becomes the pre deputy president. And if uh, the current deputy president uh, 
um, re remains as, as, as president, then I would worry big time. I said that a, a couple of years before Jacob Zuma came in, that if this man comes into office, um, then South Africa is headed the wrong direction. For, so for me, that's one science, science, science uh, thing to watch out for. If the issue about um, compulsory acquisition of land sees the light of day in parliament or whatever, and from what I'm seeing, if this demagoguery and the radicalism um, and playing to the gallery is the currency, then this thing might actually, you know, happen in, in, in Parliament because, you know, EFF and the ANC might have uh, the, ab the ability to do that. Once that happens, then you know that, that uh, the, the, the signposts are saying you, you're, you're, crossing, you're crossing the Limpopo and doing, doing so fast. If uh, the radicalism for me around issues that are not the cause for why South Africa is where, where it is right now, um, like action for, for South Africa. Uh, if, if that xenophobic thing, there's an amazing thing for me that they, the, there's a xenophobia in South Africa, but everybody says, no, it is not xenophobia, it's, it's criminality. If you see more of that happening, then the future of this country for me um, is, is very close to to being what Zimbabwe is, if, if not worse. Uh, for me, the frightening thing is that this is a big economy. The stakes are higher. So what happened in Zimbabwe could turn out to be, if there is no right leadership to um, hold this country forward, the leadership within the level of uh, a Nelson Mandela, somebody who is prepared to make unpopular decisions because it's important for the majority of the people, a leader who wants to please the majority uh, at the expense of the long-term interests of the country, is a leader that's going to put South Africa in terrible position. And the, the good, si good signs, what would be a sign that we are heading in a more optimistic direction? When uh, Suru Ramaphosa came in, I, was, I, I breathed a sigh of relief. I said, wow, finally, South Africans are, um, are headed in the, in the right direction. But things have not happened that way. We need, for me, to take comfort and say things are happening, we need to begin to see the moderate uh, human rights based culture, the stop in, the, in attacking the constitution. There's a lot of that happening. And um, the attack of the constitution saying it's not ours, it was given to us by, by the whites and, and, and so forth, that is, that, that, that is dangerous. We need to see more of the middle ground, more of what I'd call reform-minded members of the ANC, uh, you know, coming to the front. We need to see more of uh, the Sipo Pichanas, for instance, uh, reasonable people that care about this, this country, that have got the long-term in interest of this country. What chance of that happening? Uh, I think it's a 50-50, it's a because at the end of the day, this is not the fight for democracy is again what we've seen on the continent whose turn is it to eat